All right, so I've got 2.02 on my watch, so I'll go ahead and get get things started. If you happen to need to hop off uh, for any reason, this will be recorded, um, so you will get a recording uh, for this as well. Again, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to go over uh, today's presentation on our Churn Zero Impact webinars. Again, my name is Jeff Burns. I'm an account executive here at Churn Zero. Um, coming up on my year mark here in the fall, so almost at that one year milestone in my previous uh, career experiences. I have been involved in customer success. I have been involved in sales. I have been involved in merging the two. So I'm, I'm pretty well versed in the customer success and NPS world. So for today's agenda, we're going to look at why you should be including NPS in your CS strategy, how others are using NPS to gain insight, and how to collect that NPS data through other avenues besides email. Now, the great and sometimes not so great thing about customer success is, relatively speaking, we're pretty new to the SaaS world. Now, some companies out there have established customer success for five or 10 years now, and some are just getting started. Uh, you may have converted a sales rep. You may have converted a marketing person to really start handling that customer success. But not everybody is as well-versed as others in the lingo or the industry, per se. So some folks don't quite know what NPS is. And so where we're starting today is just a high level of what NPS actually is. NPS stands for Net Promoter Score. It is a customer satisfaction benchmark that measures how likely your customers are to recommend you to a friend or colleague. Now, some things that you would want to look at as a company standpoint is, are your customers satisfied or are they at risk of potential churn? How are your customers' opinions trending over time is another way to utilize NPS. And then potentially, what changes do you need to make and where? So all of this is where we're going to start talking in today's presentation. We do have a first poll coming up, so you guys will see a poll pop up in your screen. Please feel free to interact that. The first question we're going to look at today is, are you currently utilizing NPS within your company? Got the poll going. Give that another 30 seconds or so, and then we'll be able to see the results. Perfect. All right. So we've got just a little over half are, and then some aren't. So pretty good mixture there. Um, you know, I wish I had another follow-up to ask on the, for those of you who aren't, are you looking to, um, you know, some may not, some may be getting onto that path and we're at a good early research stage. But for those of you who actually put yes, the next question is, how are you using it? Is it just based off of time or are we looking at impact-based triggers or are you doing a little bit of both? What I mean by time is, is it just a 30, 60, 90 day, or are you doing it after meaningful events like an onboarding or a training example? So we'll give this another 30 seconds and we'll see where everybody else lies. All right. So it looks like a lot of people are doing time and some are doing both. It's an interesting mixture here. I like that. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to talk about some of these best practices that have spurred off of this poll. Some things that we're going to be doing and some things that we recommend we don't do. First thing, is like I mentioned earlier, we want to think of some of those moment in time scenarios when you want to you want to get that insight on on how things have gone. So aside from just surveying a customer, think about those opportunities, right? So before or after a renewal, maybe after you guys have a free trial end or a customer onboarding or training. 
other best tips and practices on the to-do side is to make sure you guys follow up with each one of the responses you get, even if it's just a simple email. Right? Put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you give a review or you give a response and someone doesn't respond back to you, you're probably less likely to continue to give. Right? Think of it like a withdrawal and a deposit. The more you deposit, the more you can withdraw. So if I continue to reply back to your responses, the more likely you are to continue to give me valuable feedback. You also want to measure regularly, not just once. Right? Opinions and products both change over time. The last thing you want to do is send an NPS out in February and bank that it's the same exact thing in a November, December timeframe. On the second topic of following up, you also want to ask follow-up survey questions. So for example, what was the most important reason for your answer? If I give you a 10 on the onboarding, I want to know what was the, what, why was it the best onboarding you ever had? Was there anywhere we still could have done better? Now, things on the to don't do side of things is we don't want to send it too early in the customer life cycle. We want to make sure you give your customers time to experience your product. You also don't just want to batch and blast, right? You're better than that, guys. So the last thing you want to do is gather every single user in your platform and just send out the same NPS. It's pretty likely that your customers have different types of user personas in your platform, an admin, a manager, et cetera, who are all going to be interacting with your tool differently. A generic NPS is not the way to go. So you want to look at life cycle or behavioral triggers, such as a usage or a promotion in the platform or growth within the platform to really hammer in on those types of instances. Another best practice is on sending out on a timeline base. Depending on how you guys work with QBRs or maybe you guys do like mid-year syncs, et cetera, sometimes you want to match your NPS to that. So rolling basis or quarterly basis really kind of depends on how you would feel matches your style, right? So if you do QBRs, maybe we match out our MPSs around quarterlies right before the QBRs. If we do mid-year calls, maybe we do a big MPS mid-year and then every other month accordingly on some other MPS based off of usage and metrics. The key thing here is when you see good behavior, you want to utilize NPS within the platform as well. So some questions on how to actually follow up with these folks, right? No matter if they're a detractor, a neutral, or a promoter, you want to make sure you follow up with them and follow up with them accordingly. For your detractors, you want to respond as soon as possible. Acknowledge their feedback on the NPS survey. Right? Don't beat around the bush. Don't try to hide anything. They've obviously had a bad experience, so we need to tackle that right away. Ask as many questions about their experience and address their concerns head on. Big thing here with detractors, they are more likely to become your next promoter because you were able to help them and get over a hurdle. And if you were able to fix their issue or help them in some way, that is more likely to then boost them up that NPS scale. A detractor is actually not that different than a promoter in the standpoint of they're both very vocal. Right? I'm sure everybody's gone to a restaurant, had a terrible experience, and the first thing you do is go to Yelp, throw up a review. You go to the same restaurant, you have a great experience, the same thing, you throw up a review. Right? <clears throat> now for your passives or your neutrals, you really want to look into the features they're using to see what might be causing any friction. Right? So reach out with advice and help on, uh, on what features they could be using more or if you see them over utilizing or under utilizing certain features. Ask them what could be done to make the product better or their experience better and then address those answers accordingly. For the promoters, investigate where they're having a positive experience. Ask them to share their experiences on review sites. 
or have them join a referral or advocacy program to show your appreciation, maybe send them a small token of appreciation as well. And one thing I did say here is ask them to share their experiences on review sites. And that's where we're going to talk a little bit about boosting your online presence. So besides the fact that reviews are used at every single stage of the buyer journey, uh, in fact, uh, it's actually one out of every three enterprise technology buyers use reviews in that purchasing stage. More reviews also means that your customer success team is actually helping and actually working. We just connected marketing and customer success within your company. Now, boosting your online presence isn't going to happen overnight, guys. Rome was not built in a day, and neither is your online presence. So we got a couple of steps here to help you guys out and how we can implement certain things like impact-based NPS versus timeline-based NPS and how you can do it. First thing is send out your NPS via multiple channels. Okay? If you have a tool in place that lets you do this in-app or just email, or sorry, or both, perfect. If you're just doing an email, you may want to explore other avenues to get some in-app content in there. Churn Zero is one of those platforms that actually empowers you to deploy MPS surveys to your customers through email and in-app messages to provide insight on customer health. Now, once we've sent out those NPSs, we're then going to segment. Right. So in the Churn Zero platform, you are able to create segments of customers based on their attributes. Right. So if you get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred types of NPS responses, you want to be able to segment those out. Are they coming from users on enterprise, mid-market, SMB? Are they different tier levels of your product and you want to focus on one level or the other? This is how you can create a group of active customers who have given you those good reviews and are in good standing but haven't given you a review yet. So now you can start segmenting that out. Let me find all my promoters who have just given me the most recent NPS and have never given me a review before. From there, you then create the messaging, right? With Intern Zero, you do have the ability to create an automated playbook, which allows you to reach out to your customers at the right time in a different way. So you can first off choose the review that you want to use. Some people are big on G2, some people are big on Captera or a Trust Radius. Um, we recommend why not all? Right? The more reviews on more platforms, the better. Uh, and then you create those play steps. So you can choose to send that automated email or an app message with the review site request. And then you can display it in a certain way. All your customers would have to do is hit submit a review. It takes them right to that site. They'll boost that review. And now all of a sudden you just got a new review on one of the top three review boards that folks go out and look for reviews on. So that pretty much wraps up the, the quick impact on NPS. Do feel free to take down my information or our information. Uh, at this time, I'm going to scroll through some of the questions and see if I can't tackle any of those. If you guys have more questions, go ahead and fire them off. I think I got one here. Would you recommend sending on a rolling basis or to send quarterly? Um, yeah, so I, I think I tackled that a little bit, but as far as NPS is concerned and how you send it out and, and the frequency of it, I would say if you're looking for a mid-year check, maybe two or three times just for that that timeline pulse but on the impact pulse i don't think there's really a timeline around that right so if you create certain scenarios of ticket responses so if a customer sends five tickets so after the fifth ticket submission and resolve send an mps so you can create a rule to do that every time so that wouldn't necessarily be a quarterly or monthly it's more of a rolling after certain rules Maybe after QBRs or trainings, et cetera, would be another good impact way. 
Got another one here. Impact based MPS to a customer's end users when there are hundreds. Great question on that. So if you guys have a hundred different end users and you're trying to send those impact ones out, that's where that, that segmenting would come into play, uh, where you would really want to hit those users. Now, if you're trying to just hit all of the end users on an impact based MPS, I would recommend creating more of a drip campaign where you send it all to the hundred and the first thing you would do is have it maybe in an in-app message. And then two days later, you, that rule that you can create, and this is something that Churn Zero can let you do, is say, okay, so out of those 100 that I sent, remove anybody that gave me a response and now send the same NPS but via email to the last 70. And then wait another five days and say, okay, after those, send the remaining 50 another in-app message or something. So you've at least captured them and you maybe, you don't wanna inundate them with that, but maybe within a week or two response, or maybe the third or fifth time they've logged in, et cetera. So there's different avenues to try to gather as much on those large user bases. Got another question here. Um, for a B2B firm with low survey responses, how do you work towards integrating the weight of the MPS scores as an overall score of a client's health? Great question here. So for folks who are trying to utilize NPS within their overall health metric, some folks weight NPS a lot heavier than others. Um, I would say personally, when you wanna look at the health score as an overall of the account health, you wanna do it on a more impact basis. So if you're getting low responses, um, try gauging those NPS asks after pertinent and meaningful events. So after an onboarding or after a training or after a QBR, when folks have a good feeling and a good grasp and they have a good experience versus you know the 30, 60, 90 ask. If you're still seeing a lack of response to those um, and you still wanna weigh MPS heavily, that's when you probably want to then set up more of those drip campaigns, try an app, try email, uh, and, and really different avenues in that in that way. Got one here. Um, where do you see the best place to start as far as MPS? So I'm gonna assume that you guys, uh, or this question comes from someone who hasn't started MPS uh, at all. Um, and I would probably suggest the uh, starting off with your first MPS right after an onboarding. Um, now, unless your onboarding is a 20 minute onboarding implementation, um, then I would say wait maybe a month or two to give them time in your application. But if you have a little bit more longer of an onboarding technical kind of onboarding, maybe it's a month long, 30 days, et cetera, um, definitely wanna gauge how that is for your users, right? So start off with how is that onboarding? How was your implementation specialist? How has the CSM been at this time? Would you recommend our platform based off of your onboarding experience alone? Um, are good places to start when you start beginning your NPS journey. Just got another one that popped in here. Uh, and this is actually probably a good, uh, good one to end on, uh, unless there's more live ones that have come in. Um, can you go more in depth how Churn Zero can help or utilize NPS? Um, I would say for time sakes purposes and to really get a better gauge of your business and how you guys are looking to utilize it, to reach out to us personally and one of our, our team members can really get a good feel for that and, and uh, help you through that process and show you exactly how we can help. So definitely give us a look up on the web. You can shoot me an email and I can point you in the right direction of who your rep would be. Um, but I would say reach out to us personally and, and we can help you guys get some things started there. Perfect. So it looks like I did everything in 20 minutes, which means I gave you guys 10 minutes back to your day. So uh, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Everybody have a great rest of your day and we hope to hear from you soon.